Hey everybody, John here from the Crafting Brothers with another project for the week. Uh, a while back, I made a modular castle wall. It was really cool. It had brick walls, it had pillars, and you could configure them any way that you wanted to. So I thought that that would be a cool project this week for my farmhouse. So you can see it right here. I've got these all in sections and I've decided to incorporate magnets in these in either end of these pieces here. So when you're reconfiguring your fence, these will just snap together like that uh, and make it really easy to uh, reconfigure the fence any way that you want to. Uh, so let's get right to it. I'm building a fence for my farm. Let's get to it. Okay, I'm gonna cut my fence pieces out of XPS foam with the one inch thickness here and I've gone three quarters on the sides. And I'll show you why that's gonna be a little smaller, but I'm gonna cut these into four inch lengths. So I had an idea here to use the XPS foam for the bottom parts of the fence and they are going to end up with the brick texture on it. What I decided to do here is cover the XPS foam with the Dollar Tree foam. And the reason for this is because the Dollar Tree foam takes textures much easier than the XPS foam. So that's the theory. We'll see if it works. So for this project, I've decided to make six long sections of the fence here, and then I'll do two corner pieces and of course the front gate section. A little sanding on each side helps prepare the pieces for the texture roller, which is next. So again, I've got six long sections here, and now I'm going to make two corner pieces for either side of the fence. To apply the texture to the bottom parts of these fence pieces, I'm using a 3D printed dry stone roller. A wood grain roller is used here to put some texture on the XPS foam, and these are going to be the posts for the top of the fence. And again, if you don't have any of these 3D rollers, don't stress because you can always use a pen and X-Acto knife and draw in these details. Next, I've got my magnets ready to insert on either side of the fence sections. So I've just traced the magnets and now I'm going to cut them out with an X-Acto knife so I can glue them in. Next, a coat of Mod Podge and black paint. And then on our wood pieces, we're going to go ahead and use a golden brown over that. For the stone sections at the bottom of the fence, we're going to be using a khaki tan as a base coat here, and then we're going to do our dry brush over that. I'm going to be trying this new wood plank roller for the first time here, and this is going to be the wood sections in between the fence posts. After that, a wire brush works good here to get the wood grain into the foam. And of course, next, a coat of Mod Podge and black paint. I'm using a wire brush and wood grain roller to texture all the sides of the fence poles. After that, we're gonna paint them all up in Mod Podge and black paint and the usual golden brown followed with an acrylic brown ink. I've painted all of my wood pieces, so now I'm gonna finish them all with a coat of acrylic brown ink. Usually one coat is enough, but I might go over it twice if necessary. To make the front gate section, I'll just cut one of the bases in half to create an opening in the fence. I'm using a Liquitex black wash with some brown ink mixed in to finish the fence bases. I'll also be applying a second coat later on. For the fence gates, I've cut out two door pieces which have been textured with wood grain and they'll be painted the same as all the other wood pieces. 
To create a frame for the fence gates, I'm making two stone bases for the sides. I'm applying a stone texture with tin foil, then painting them with pewter gray followed by a dry brush of granite gray. Next, I'm applying a second coat of my Liquitex brown and black wash. After trimming the fence posts down to about two inches, I'm gonna go ahead and glue two of these on each of the fence bases. Then I'm gonna cut the wood plank sections which will go in between the posts. A wood strip is glued to the top of each panel before gluing the section of fence to the base. Back to the stone sections here, I'm going to give these a dry brush of granite gray. Okay, so I'm wrapping up this project. I'm ready to do the front gate of this farm fence here. And so the pieces that I'm gonna use here are just a couple of pieces of the Dollar Tree foam with the wood grain roller. I uh, put the pattern in there, painted it, and then stained it. Same as all the other stuff here. I've got a couple of pieces of um, XPS foam here that I'm gonna use for part of the entrance. And uh, this is just gonna be part of the door frame. And then I've got a couple of pilings here. And what I like to do is take these miniature hand clocks that I get from Michaels and I use these for the door hinges. I like this one in particular, but the uh, it's a little bit long, so I have to cut off the ends here. And then I'm going to spray paint them and I will use them as the door hinges there after I spray paint them probably black. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut up a couple of these, get these ready. And I'm going to make a door plate here as well using uh, some Sculpey clay with a little plate and then that will be the uh, door handle. And uh, so we're almost done. Let's get this wrapped up. I'm going to use Sculpey to create a couple of metal door plates. So I'm going to roll these out and then they'll go in the oven to harden up. Now I'm going to glue these stone bases to the inside of the gate opening. After the stone bases are glued on, I'm going to glue the frame pieces for the gate. Before gluing the rest of the door frame pieces, I'm going to glue the gates together to strengthen this section. Then I'll glue the top section to the rest of the frame. I'm using miniature clock hands here to create the door hinges, so I've just painted them black and I'm gluing them on with super glue. I'm creating a set of door knockers here using two small metal rings, which will then be glued to the door plates. I'm also gluing a small piece of plastic tubing over the rings. I did this by cutting off the coating of a 10 gauge wire and then cut that piece in half. Next, I'm gonna glue on the door base plates, which have been painted black. And finally, I'll glue on the door knockers, which have been painted with gunmetal. Finally, using a small length of chain, I'm going to glue this sign to the top of the gate frame. And that concludes the construction of this modular farmhouse fence. I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to send me any comments you have on this project. And of course, subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you next week.